Before we get started, I would just like to say thank you for 9,000 subscribers. Let's try to hit 10k by the end of the year. Have you ever been in a situation where you need a car but you have very little to spend on it due to high insurance, external activities or simply because you are a broke ass bitch? Then this video is for you. Here are 5 awesome cars for under a thousand euro. Alfa Romeo 147. Although it wasn't Alfa's best car, the 147 is still an attractive, sporty and unique hatchback. For 1000 euro, you can get a 1.6 litre twin spark with a respectable 120 brake horsepower. Pay a little more and you can get a 2 litre twin spark with 150 brake horsepower. Here is what to look out for. Although most 147s are cheap, it won't be hard to come by ones that are cheap for a reason. Obviously, do your usual checks like tax, rust, NCT and service history, but also make sure that the cam belt on the twin spark engines was replaced when they were meant to be replaced. If they weren't, then you got yourself a ticking time bomb. Be sure to avoid the cell speed automatic gearbox as well. Toyota Celica If you want something a little sporty in your life, then check out the Mark 7 Toyota Celica. As well as being made by a trustworthy and reliable company, they were also surprisingly cheap to insure in comparison to favourites like the Honda Civic. Granted, the entry level 1.8 litre with 140 brake horsepower isn't that fast. If you have a need for speed, you could get the T-Sport with 190 brake horsepower, but you won't be getting one of them for 1000 euro, that's for sure. Here is what to look out for. Look inside the interior for any damp carpets around the boot and rear seats, as the seals in the boot tend to fail. Suspension components can fail, but they are cheap and easy to fix, and the gearboxes can be temperamental, but simple maintenance can keep any issues at bay. VW Passat TDI If you will be doing many, many miles, then check out the Mark V or a high mileage Mark VI VW Passat TDI. Using a 1.9 litre TDI engine, the Passat guarantees comfort, reliability and economical travelling. Although butthurt BMW fanboys joke about VWs and Audis being unreliable, I got bullshit on that, as with good maintenance, these cars will go on forever and ever. Literally look outside and see how many sets that are 15 years or older are still chucking away on our roads. If you think that VW TDIs are unreliable, then look at car throttle Skoda Octavia, known as Miles, which has the same engine as Passat and over 430,000 miles. Here's what to look out for. Mark 6 is having an electric handbrake, which can fail and be a costly fix. The power steering rack can fail. Also, high mileage cars have a secret pass, so check on the car's service history to see if the car has had its oil and fuel pumps changed. Sure, this could be a sign of wear and tear, but it could also be a sign that the car has been filled with dirty diesel. Maybe contact the mechanic who serves the car if you're uncertain. Hyundai Coupe Ok, so it wasn't Hyundai's greatest car, but its low price and stylish appeal can make it a good deal. Wait, that rhymes. As you would expect, the Coupe is all show but no go. The 1.6 litre engine is good enough for about 100 horsepower, and the 2 litre has about 140 brake horsepower. But look on the plus side, the Coupe is stylish, reliable, and cheap as chips. A thousand euro could get you a low mileage one that hasn't been abused or riced. Here's what to look out for. Most engines and electrics fail due to neglect, so check the car's service history to see if it was serviced frequently. Rust can be found in the rear wheel arches, so look out for any telltale signs. The body control module, whatever that is, can also fail due to water ingress. This is a very pricey fix so if you see it, avoid it. Ford Puma, the little coupe that could. The Ford Puma was a tiny coupe with hatchback practicality but sports car styling and performance. They either came with a mediocre 1.4 litre engine, a nippy 1.6 litre engine or the top of the range 1.7 litre engine. They are so cheap nowadays that it's criminal. They are a very ideal first car and something that stands out from the Polos and Fiestas. Here's what to look out for. Pumas are great, but not perfect. Like the coupe from earlier, the Pumas rear arches and sills can get rusty over time. The tip is to use a magnet against it. If it sticks, then it's good. But if it doesn't, 
Then it was an arch which was repaired in the past with body filler. The electrics for the rear wiper can also fail, but a bit of contact cleaner can sort that out. Check for the wear of the interior and compare it to the car's mileage. If it doesn't add up, then it's probably been clocked. Finally, check the head gasket, as it is common for them to fail, especially on the 1.7 litre models. <laughs>